Hi, my name is Dr. Umesh Srikantha. I am working as a consultant neurosurgeon and head of spine services at Asta Hospitals, Bangalore. In this short video, I am going to talk about cervical arthroplasty. Well, I know what all of you are thinking. Whenever you say arthroplasty, it's common that our uh, thought process directly go to the knee or the hip where the arthroplasty is more commonly done. But it is not so always. In a cervical disc prolapse, that is in the neck. So one of the recent or one of the more challenging uh, treatments that can be offered is a cervical arthroplasty what is what we more commonly call as an artificial cervical disc replacement and as the word itself says what we are trying to do is we are trying to remove the diseased disc inside the neck and we are going to replace it with an artificial cervical disc so this is called a cervical arthroplasty or an artificial cervical disc replacement. So when is it required? It is required in common cases of cervical disc prolapse, especially in young people. In young people means when I say it is less than 50 years of old because it is not recommended to be done in older people population because of weak bones or because of associated degenerative processes which are not conducive for a cervical disc replacement. So in a young patient when he develops a cervical disc prolapse the more common or the most commonly done procedure nowadays is still an anterior cervical discectomy and a fusion so whenever we say fusion then as the term itself says what we are trying to do is we are trying to bring two bones together through an artificial bone that is kept in between and we are going to fix that with a screw above and a screw below so that the movement here is lost the segment becomes stable and of course the nerve compression that is there that is removed as a part of a discectomy procedure but anterior cervical discectomy and fusion though has been very very successful has its own limitations has its own disadvantages slight disadvantages are there so these disadvantages are because whenever we are putting a screw and we are putting a fusion process in between so there is loss of segmental motion that is in between those two bones whatever normal movement has to happen is lost and this leads to a loss of segmental motion and this in turn leads to an increased movement or an increased stress on the adjacent level disease. So number one, the loss of movement results in some sort of stiffness of the neck which is most people experience post-operatively and also the increased stress on the adjacent level disc that is the disc that is there above the disc that is there below. So this results in an increased incidence of adjacent segment disease what we call as adjacent segment degeneration or an adjacent segment disc products. So over a period of time in a fusion procedure, maybe in a few years time, the second disc or a third disc that is there adjacent to these index level surgery discs can result in a disc prolapse or may require some attention in the later period also. So what is artificial disc? So in artificial disc what we are trying to do is we are trying to maintain this movement. Ultimately the function of a disc is to provide that cushion between the two bones and to help in movement of the bones. So in an artificial disc what we are trying to do is achieve these two things. One is by maintaining the movement between the two bones what we are trying to achieve is to reduce the stiffness that happens in the neck after the surgery and also to decrease the incidence of adjacent level disease that is that lesser stress is transferred to a adjacent segment and these two in turn result in a better functional neck outcomes so the the pain that is there before the surgery the radicular pain or those things that nerve compression that is there can be effectively relieved irrespective of whether we are doing a discectomy procedure or whether we are doing an artificial uh, uh, disc or whether we are doing a fusion procedure but what we do after the discectomy and after the nerve decompression is achieved is what is important that is whether we are doing a fusion or whether we are doing an arthroplasty so in an arthroplasty by putting an artificial disc we are maintaining the movement hence resulting in lesser stiffness and reduced risk on the adjacent segment disease which in turn results in better functional neck outcomes which is probably one of the disadvantages of a cervical fusion procedure or a cervical discectomy and fusion procedure commonly called as ACDF. Yes, artificial disc is one of the recent, one of the better techniques to treat disc prolapses in the young, but it is not suitable for all cases. So that we have to understand. So whenever it is deemed suitable, that is one of the better or bet, uh, options for treating a cervical disc prolapse in, in young patients who develop a cervical disc related issue. 
Well, the spine team at Aster RV specializes in treating cervical disc prolapses through all measure, options that are available, whether it be a cervical discectomy and fusion, or whether it be an advanced procedure like a cervical arthroplasty or a cervical artificial disc replacement, which is going to give a better outcome as far as a cervical disc prolapse in a young patient is concerned, minimizing the risks of a future disc prolapse at an adjacent level and also providing better functional outcomes as far as the you know neck disability index is concerned thank you